Hello, Humble fans. Hello, Humble Hour. I just want to thank uh, the boys from the Humble Hour for allowing me to do this. Uh, it's been 10 years since I started in uh, handball uh, for the Champions League. And as you know, I write a blog for EHFCL. And sometimes, you know, you like to keep them short and maybe there's a few more things you'd like to say and you don't get to write them down. So uh, they allowed me to do this voiceover of uh, a blog for the final match of the week of 2019, which sees the end of the decade coming into 2020. So hope you'll bear with me. It might be easier for some of you traveling to work to have a listen to it rather than trying to read. Uh, so here goes. I've lost count of the amount of times I've awoken in a strange hotel room in some country, wondering where I am and what I'm doing here, when I finally realize where I am, wondering what the hell it's all about. I suppose travelling to France for the final match of the week of this decade has brought back my toe-dipping over 30 years ago into Proust's A la recherche du temps perdu. So this blog is a little look back into the past 10 years or so to see the impact handball has had on me and sift through the mists of time that have fine-tuned some moments more than others in a kaleidoscope of hundreds of memories. Just so you know, I was never a commentator and I was an average handball player, but somehow the EHF and a man called Uli Gutvinegger uh, took a chance on a novice commentating their flagship competition. It was a phone conversation with a kind of out beyond the ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there's a field, I'll meet you there moment. I never thought they'd call me again, but here I am a decade later and looking back at a dream job. The idea was to bring top level handball to the English speaking world. We never expected Match of the Week to become the institution it has. Chris and David came on board, especially Chris. I want to thank them both because without them, I don't know if I would have been able to continue. Because when I started, I was single with as much free time as that allows to travel. And now I'm married with four children. And I have to also say that their ability and knowledge meant that the viewers had a wider variety of approaches and insights. My own situation now gives me a new perception into the travails and stresses that players deal with. It has changed my judgment of the professional athlete. In fact, my propinquity, there's a word for you, it means my nearness with the players, means that I feel for them when they win or lose in equal measure. I should also give a special mention to the men with the whistles, the referees as well, who balance refereeing with their jobs and private lives. So next year is 2020. And they say that hindsight is 2020 vision. But I'm going to be honest with you and say that most of what I remember is a blur. But it's also said that it's not how many breaths you take, but the moments that take your breath away. The Berlin comeback about against uh, Leon stands out. The Kielsa comeback against Vesprem are as keen as ever in my mind's eye. And let me just add here, because it's not in the blog, the idea once upon a time that in the EHF Final Four that a German or a Spanish team would win is also a, t a thing of the past. But it's mostly the people I remember, the players who took me under their wing, who accepted me, an unknown, the referees who helped hone my knowledge of the game, who've always been available to answer any of my questions. Tennessee Williams put it best in The Streetcar Named Desire, I have always depended on the kindness of strangers. And that was so true in the early years with the handball family. And although that family is continually morphing, that ethos has never been lost. The changes we've seen in production, TV, branding and style of play have never diminished the basic tenet of handball. It's for everyone. It embraces everyone. It's the driving force for me that separates us from all other sports. It's international. It's huge. And yet it's, as the Danes would say, Hygge, I think that's how they say it. But you know what I mean. It's kind of all cosy and warm and I love that. Clubs have come and gone. Clubs have gone from small to huge in that time. Think about it. Vardar once upon a time was behind Metalurg. Copenhagen doesn't exist anymore. Atletico Madrid gone. Ciudad Real, although there is uh, some kind of revival down there, are no longer the Champions League team they were. Seged, when we first started was an outlier. Now they're a staple in the last eight. Kielce, where I'm not going to say also runs. They were always aiming to be a big club, but now they are absolutely huge. 
PSG and the brand that it is has become a huge player on the scene as well, having not even registered on my radar when we began. Barcelona has been an ever-present and a huge influence on how I view the handball firmament. How fitting that the last match of the week of this decade should be between two of the biggest brands in the world. It was impossible to even envisage this 10 years ago. The Stade de Coubertin is the venue. The man who espoused sports in French schools, the stadium is named after him. Uh, he saw sport as a kind of muscular Christianity. I don't think, when he started, I think rugby was in his mind. I don't think he would have foreseen how much handball would develop in France. And muscular is a good way to describe this team. They're strong and adaptable, and they will need to be playing against this Barcelona team, which plays like a supercharged rocket. The first game between them this season was tight. Barcelona won, although Paris had a lot of injuries in that game. To be honest, they've suffered from that all season. And it's not surprising. Someone once said to me, ballroom dancing is a contact sport. Handball is a collision sport. Let's hope for two fully fit squads and have a match that will be as eye-catching as so many of the matches of the last decade. What's sure is that both of these teams will be in the Champions League next season. For others, this season is like a version of Handball's Got Talent. You may not be in with a chance of winning the competition, but you are certainly playing for your place in it in the years to come. I have to say that I've seen an increased level of competition this season. And maybe it's just me, but that may have something to do with it. I'm not complaining. It's been fantastic. But as Seamus Heaney wrote, between my finger and thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it. It's been a roller coaster 10 years that has exceeded my wildest imagination of where it would take me or how big handball would become. Proust examined how our personal experience shapes the world around us. I like to think that handball has shaped my world. So, I travelled to Paris this weekend and I may wake in a Parisian auberge over the weekend thinking I can hear one of the kids crying and after a few seconds of complete panic realise where I am. Then the words of advice I first received in media will flood back. Broadcast like it's your last time. This game deserves it. Every game has deserved it. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. And even though it's a little early, happy Christmas. And best wishes to everyone in 2020 and hope to see you then.